hurricane has an eye looks into the soul don't care where you've been don't care where you go you can try to ride it if you dare fly within a hurricane Hi, Dave Hadfield here, and I'm strapping on the parachute to fly this Mark 12 Hurricane. It's flight number six in our test sequence, and time for some light aerobatics. I've been looking forward to this. Should be a lot more interesting than engine readings and landing gear checks. This is a Canadian-built Hurricane that served with 125 Squadron, RCAF, on the East Coast during World War II. It ended up on the prairies and survived in the hands of a pilot farmer collector named Harry Wariot. And we just completed its restoration here in April of 2022. <clears throat> what a great day for this. My gosh. Superb. Start check. The rudder pedals are extended to maximum. The harness is secure. The camera's on. Hood is open and locked. The emergency egress panel is secured, latched. The alternator is going on. And the carriage down lights. Battery switch is going on. And uh, the gear lights are on. And the alternate check is good. Four bulbs. Engine gauges were warm enough for a start. Fuel quantity. Full. 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 Throttle cracked. Mixture is rich, which is aft. Crop speed control is full forward. Fuel cock going to reserve. On. Radiator shutter is open. Full forward. Full down. Feel <clears throat> the uh, primer. Looking for two good ones. Let me get a little fuel pressure in the system here. There's one. And there's another. And we're locked. Set. Lots of air pressure. Again, get 10 pounds of fuel pressure. Main mag needles are going on, and we're ready to start. Clear. Let's go over that start Clear. sequence Clear. again. It's a little different in a Hurricane, a Canadian one with a Packard 29 Merlin engine. First of all, there are three magnetos, the regular two plus a starting mag. 
The starting mag produces a particularly hot spark on the intake side plugs for when you're hand cranking, as in this early British Mark I Hurricane. It was left as an option on the Canadian Hurricanes because battery carts here in Canada back then were not necessarily commonplace. And the priming's different, too. Our chief restorer, Pat Tenger, coached me to give it a couple of shots of prime, but then use the wobble pump to keep it going. That's a bit different from the Spitfire and the Mustang, but I gotta say it works. So when you're ready to turn the prop, your left forefinger goes to the start button, bottom left, and your right hand is on the wobble pump to keep it going if it goes to die after it first catches. The after start check is quite straightforward. Oil pressure, check. Starting magneto, off. Primer, in and locked. RPM, 1000 or smooth running. Fuel pressure, check by turning the electric fuel pump on. Watch the needle and then off. Radiator shutter as required. Flaps up. Check we get 1000 PSI in the hydraulics and then back to neutral. Confirm they did retract with the ground crew, in this case Paul Tremblay, our director of maintenance. Radio transponder check, set. And confirm we have brake pressure before we taxi away. brake checks, both wheels. These are pneumatically operated drum brakes and they can be quite complicated to rig properly. We have to be really careful with these Flight School 150s. The students are from all over the world and their focus is on their lesson, not on us. And <laughs> I know this because I've been there in both seats. Look how fast this 150 appears from under the nose. My eyeball visibility is worse than the helmet cam. It's about an inch and a half lower. All right, so the oil temperature has risen to the 30 degrees Celsius I like to see before we do the run up. Move the rudder bar to the position where the brake pressure is maximum for each wheel. Fuel selector to main tanks on. Check for the click. Radiator shutter open. Time to lower the seat a bit. Have a good look around, including the mirror. I don't want this Merlin to flip somebody over. Take the parking brake off because I want to hold the brakes to the maximum for when the RPM comes up. Increase the throttle friction so it doesn't creep. Make sure the brakes are holding. Bring the power up to 1900 RPM. By the way, the actual RPM gauge is hidden under the glare shield. I can see it with my eyeballs, but the helmet cam can't. That true tack box on the top of the glare shield is an optic device as a cross check for RPM. Don't forget a Merlin is geared almost two for one.
Pre-takeoff check, nav light, speedo heat as required, off in this case. Trims, set pitch neutral, rudder to right. Prop lever, full forward. Mixture lever, rich, which is fully back. Fuel, main tanks on, as per the run-up. Fuel boost pump on, check the pressure increase, bounces up. Controls, free and correct. Flaps up, harness tight, locked. Other items at the end of the runway. Call got no radio. Get a transponder code. And taxi away. There's no takeoff delay, so we'll continue the turn right to the runway heading instead of leaving the nose offset for visibility. Set the old barrel DG to runway heading. Transponder to ALT. Crank up the friction wheels on the throttle quadrant to maximum because I'm going to have to swap hands to get the gear up. Make the radio call. We're rolling. Get the paraphernalia out of the way. Harness, seat height. One last check around the cockpit. Review the power settings I'm going to need on departure. Rotate the gear retraction safety catch out of the way. Set the volume on the radio to maximum. Remember that even though it's British, it's a right foot airplane. <laughs> Release the park brake and it's time to go. Let's review that takeoff. There's lots going on. First, get straight. The tailwheel's not steerable or lockable. Stick hard back, right foot primed. Power smoothly up to 46 inches. Make sure the RPM doesn't exceed 3,000. Let the tail come up a bit and it flies off after a roll of about 1,300 feet. Swap hands and hope you remember the throttle friction, squeeze the brakes, and retract the gear. Max gear speed is 140. Trim, once the two red lights indicate the gear is up and locked. Initiate a turn to stay in the airport environment. Double check which handle you're grabbing on the throttle quadrant. And bring the manifold pressure back. Climb power target is 36 inches. Also point out to the mechanics that it's only giving us 2850 RPM, so more adjustment is required in the prop governor. 
Then bring the RPM back to 2650. Check for traffic. And then get the hood slid forward without getting your arm broken off in the slipstream. The rigging is good, it flies straight, and there's very little vibration. Switch to terminal's frequency, talk to them, and bring the gear lever back to neutral, which could have been done earlier. That's it. Check temperatures, pressures, Hydraulics, manage the fuel, you're squared away. We've already done a stall series on this aeroplane, so the first maneuver to explore is the loop. So, safety checks accomplished, climb power set, lower the nose. The book recommends 250 to 300. It does take quite a long time to get 300, so I bring the nose up at 290. There's no G meter on board, so I estimate a 4G pull. Well, that first loop was a bit strange. The aircraft's response to control movement was not what I expected. It wasn't smooth and linear like it is in the other fighters. I had almost full back stick at one point to keep the nose coming around. But it still got a little slow at the top of the loop and I went off heading. So pause, think about it for a second, review the procedure, review the trim, and give it another try with a slightly higher entry speed and maybe a stronger initial pull. Slightly better in pitch, but still not great. I suspect we need more ballast in the tail. We are within the suggested C a G range, of course, but in this civilian configuration, some adjustment is required. And uh, by the way, the three-quarter roll and turn, that's just for fun. I rolled it several times on previous flights, and that's what's on the program now. Sweet! The Hurricane rolls faster and requires less muscle on the ailerons than the Spitfire. Let's try a point roll. Not bad. Nice crisp response, but maybe pull the nose up a little higher. We don't want to subject these Merlins to negative G. They'll keep running okay. It's an injection carburetor, but the oil system is not designed for sustained negative G. Well, at this point I discontinued the aerobatics in order to carry out some other items on the test card, throttle and RPM control rigging, which I'll spare you, went back and landed, had a cup of tea while I wrote up my notes, refueled the airplane, got back in the air, and carried on with the aerobatics. Wingovers and Lazy 8s are a terrific way to get to know a new aeroplane. They don't look very dramatic, but they're a terrific coordination exercise. 
and they're also a precision maneuver. You come up through the horizon with wings level, speed built up, pull the nose way up, and the camera doesn't quite do this justice. And then at the 90 degree point in the turn, you let the nose back through the horizon. The aircraft starts to accelerate again, even though we only have cruise power on. The whole time, we keep the ball in the middle. That's the essential thing. And then back up at the 180 degree point, wings level on the horizon again. And you continue that smooth, coordinated, steady rates of pitch and roll. The new airplane aspect is that some of these machines have very different inputs from left to right, depending on the torque and the asymmetric thrust of the airplane. So it's a really great way to get to know it. I did about 10 of these and established that it does a wing over to the left much more smoothly and naturally than one to the right. Much more rudder required in the right one. And also the pitch inputs are quite different from a Spitfire. More back pressure required to pitch the airplane up. No bad thing, just getting to know the new aircraft. Also, I was watching the temperatures and pressures very closely because this was the first time away from the airport and out into the practice area but she ran smooth and cool. Next, fuel checks. Very important in a new aeroplane, particularly if you're doing aerobatics. I wanna make sure that both main tanks are feeding equally. To check the fuel quantity in a Hurricane, you move the selector to the desired tank, push it, then read the value on the needle. To roll a Hurricane is quite simple and natural. You can even do it with low cruise power like I have here, 31 inches and about 2200 RPM. Nose down, get about 220, smooth pull up well above the horizon. Stick most of the way over, but it doesn't take a lot of arm pressure. Some rudder initially, then after the 90 degree point, nothing, just let it come around. During the inverted portion, we ease forward on the stick, but not enough to go negative G. As I said before, the engine will keep running but the oil system's not up to it. A fun turning maneuver is to do a three-quarter roll the wrong way and up in a turn the way you intend to go. Good orientation practice. You gotta roll to the right every once in a while too, even though it never feels as natural.
getting hot in here. <laughs> I wonder why. Always a good idea, though, to check the carbon monoxide detector. Now some air show display practice. Where the river crosses the highway is a great show center mark. And I'm practicing wing over turns to the corner markers turning away from the crowd. Still quite high, of course, because I haven't done that before in this airplane. I see I'm not compensating for the west wind enough up here. So, coming back to the airport, I was amazed to find there was no one in the circuit. That never happens around here. So I had a bit of fun. And it was good to let Paul and Pat and the guys see the airplane fly. Out of the brake, we bring the nose up and get the speed back below 140 so we can select gear down. Hood, open for landing. Then it's a gump check. Gas, selection, quantity, pressure, pumps. Confirm the undercarriage went down. You get two green lights. Mixture aft for rich because it's British. Prop pitch full fine. Radiator flap open. Wing flaps, I don't use full because it tends to blank out the tail and reduce your elevator effectiveness. But three quarters is fine, and the aircraft loves to three point. Speeds, we hold 105 till we're on final, then let it come back to about 80 over the threshold. It has very good manners in a three-point and tracks straight. Then, like most of these warbirds, little or no braking until you've slowed right down. At Gatineau, that taxiway is at the 3,000 foot point. We have no trouble making it in a hurricane. You have to be very careful with obstructions like these cones when you're taxiing a fighter. You just can't see. As I said before, my eyeball height is below this camera height. And in the fighters, there's usually pitot tubes and other things sticking down below the wings. Man, I sure killed a lot of bugs. Master, mags, fuel, hot, 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 hot. Master, eggs, three of them, fuel. Good.
hurricane has an eye looks into the soul don't care where you've been don't care where you go you can try to ride it if you dare fly within a hurricane